Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off with news from HPE Cast 2019, specifically a slide that AMD have released which tells us the performance targets of Milan. If you're unfamiliar with Milan, it is the third generation Epic line of processors, which is obviously targeting servers and high performance computing, and will be the successor to the current second generation uh, CPUs from the company known as Rome. Rome uses Zen 2 architecture, whereas Milan will use Zen 3. And in this slide, you can clearly t see the performance targets of Milan are rather lofty. Rome currently has a roughly on par uh, performance per watt uh, ratio to, let's say, Intel's Ice Lake CPUs, which are built on the 10NM process, whereas Milan very much outshines them. So what's the story here? Why is this? Well, it actually goes back about a year. If you recall, there was an interview with Forrest Norod, and what he revealed was that uh, uh, Rome was actually created with a best case possible scenario for what Intel could deliver. In other words, what they thought, what is the absolute maximum potential possible that Intel will put out with Ice Lake, with its Ice Lake based Xeons? Well, what ended up happening, of course, is that Intel were delaying its processors for the reasons of 10NM, insert every meme in their world here. So what ended up happening, of course, is that Intel were faced with delays while AMD managed to get Rome out of the door. So Milan, in theory, just continues to build upon that and uses the Zen 3 architecture and uses the... Uh, Zen 3 architecture on the 7NM Plus node. It's going to be very much fascinating to see what happens in the server space because of this and what happens to Intel's market share. If you recall about a week and a half-ish ago maybe, I put out a video that Zen 3 is going to be quote very competitive uh, with Sunny Cove. That was according to one of my sources who I'd been speaking with and this does seem to be very accurate. Uh, based upon the information we have here from AMD's slide. Of course, at the end of the day, the slide is from AMD, so you shouldn't necessarily say that it's going to mop the floor with Intel and every single aspect of every single application that you could ever throw at it. They are saying in terms of uh, performance per watt, but obviously different workloads will affect the processor differently. So that's something that's going to be requiring uh, third-party independent testing when those CPUs launch. But still, if you look at how Rome's uh, performing, it's not very difficult to imagine that that's going to be a pretty accurate assessment from AMD. TSMC and their 7NM node is extremely popular with its customers. It's customers, of course, not being us, but companies such as AMD and uh, Apple. AMD using it for their Zen 2 line of CPUs, for example, Rome and uh, Ryzen 3000, and Apple for products such as the iPhone. But just like any manufacturing capability for anything, there is a limit on how much you can produce, and TSMC have just about come to that limit, at least according to Digi Times in a report, the lead time for products is now six months, whereas previously it was only two months, which is obviously quite the increase. Before you start running in the streets screaming in terror at the thought of raised GPU prices, well, obviously you still have NVIDIA, so that's probably not likely to happen, but at least AMD, theoretically, I suppose, you could imagine a scenario where uh, let's say the RX 5700 and 5700 XT were unavailable because of manufacturing concerns, that's not going to happen, almost certainly, because from the report, it seems that the lead time increase is going to affect companies looking to shift production onto the 7NM uh, node from, let's say, I don't know, 14NM, or if they are looking to expand capacity uh, for example, they are looking to manufacture a different product or they want to increase the amount of a product that is already being manufactured. So, in theory anyway, AMD for their current products should 
be able to continue to meet the demand just as they are now. The issue is, though, that obviously AMD do want to put out other GPUs. For example, uh, the RX 570 from the company is still a really good value GPU. But as we see new products enter production, this could continue to constrain TSMC's manufacturing capabilities further still. This isn't, however, the first time that AMD, along with uh, TSMC's customers, have faced these problems. Uh, back before we even had the Ryzen 3000 slash Nave launch, Apple were just eating up as much of the production capability of uh, TSMC and their 7nm node as they could because they were readying the production of the new iPhones. So I wouldn't say that this is time to panic or anything like that. Just be mindful that there is a potential, a very small potential, that certain upcoming products could see some shortages or delay. But it, I don't think at the moment anyway there's any reason to get too concerned. TSMC are reported to be increasing its budget, however, for new advanced nodes to increase its manufacturing capabilities. So with any luck, uh, this should not be a problem which maintains itself over the next several years anyway. Next, while we're on the subject of AMD, I'd like to bring your attention to the freedesktop.org archive for patch notes for uh, AMD GPU drivers. More specifically, we have a couple of additional references for the upcoming Nave 12 GPUs. There's not a whole lot of information that we can get here. We don't have exactly the number of compute units, the uh, amount of memory, as well as the clock frequencies or anything like that. But still, this has added the Nave 12 PCI ID uh, into the patches and a couple of the entries read 0x1002 0x7360 PCI NEID PCI NEID chip Nave 12 and the second entry is 0x1002 which is identical to the first entry and then 0x7362 and uh, Nave 12. At this point frankly I just want to know what AMD are planning for its higher performance tier RDNA based GPUs as well as the lower performance tier RDNA based GPUs and what prices they're going to charge in relation to NVIDIA. Particularly given the latest pieces of news concerning NVIDIA and this is according to Notebook Check. Uh, this is a story that actually emerged Sunday and I missed it originally uh, but a couple of people messaged me regarding it. So according to them an RTX 2060 equipped gaming laptop actually performs considerably worse than the desktop counterpart. How much worse? Well, around 20 to 25 percent. I say around 20 to 25 percent because, as usual, a desktop GPU is very hard to pinpoint. Because, for example, you could get like an EVGA for the win card or a really highly clocked one, or you could get like a really basic uh, kind of blower cooler reference design that doesn't have any factory overclock or anything like that. But even so, 20 to 25 percent is what Notebook Check claims. Now, this is an issue I've had with NVIDIA for a while, and I'm pretty certain many of you would probably agree with me here, and that is that NVIDIA are not clear now regarding the differences between a GPU which is designed for the laptop or for a desktop derivative. So basically, you have an identical branding between the two parts. This was another criticism I actually had for Intel back in the day with uh, with the really confusing i7 for um, for laptops, if you remember, where you had different core counts. And yeah, that's not much better on uh, Intel's uh, CPU side of things. It's absolutely really confusing at the moment uh, with Ice Lake. And you know what? I'm not even going to go into the 10th generation CPUs because I'm going to get a headache. Um, but still, uh, in regards to this anyway, according to Notebook Check, the RTX 2060 is much slower so it's not going to be that much faster even than let's say a gtx 1660 ti 
which is not great. Now, there are some potentials, uh, potential explanations, which is not regarding the specifications. It's potentially possible it's thermal related. So obviously, modern day GPUs boost their core clock based upon the amount of energies that they have to work with, as well as the amount of thermal headroom. So if you're aiming a hairdryer at the thing, it's not going to boost as high as if you were to have it in a fairly cool uh, air-conditioned environment, pretty obviously. So that could be one of the reasons, because they've not really given any uh, information regarding the specifications. So we don't know if the number of SMs is different, if the clock frequencies is different, or whatever other reasons. So I'm going to give them the benefit, that is uh, NVIDIA, the benefit of the doubt until we know uh, well, the final the final uh, tally. However, the RTX 2070 mobile is around 14% slower. Uh, so, yeah, it's potentially possible that that is accurate. I believe the 2080 mobile isn't quite uh, quite as much of a gap compared to the desktop 2080. I think it's like I don't know five ten percent something like that. But I'm not so uh, well versed on the mobile RTX 20 series, to be totally honest. But anyway, yeah, so at least according to Notebook Check, there is a significant difference between the 2060 and uh, desktop and a 2060 mobile, which is not great for potential customers. AMD have done extremely well when it comes to the desktop, servers, high-end desktop solutions, and so on. And of course, they even provide the APUs for the next generation consoles, the PS5, as well as the Xbox Scarlet. But if there's one area that AMD haven't quite managed to nail down, it's laptops. Just to be clear here, I'm not necessarily saying they don't have solutions and laptop APUs aren't available, but the number of laptops which feature AMD APUs compared to, let's say, Intel is not where I am sure many would agree it should be. The good news is that is starting to change. Renor is expected to use a Zen 2 based CPU, and we've seen leaks that point out it has a Vega based GPU. Yes, Vega, not uh, RDNA slash Nave. But there's one area still left and that is an APU designed for notebooks and thin, slight, uh, thin and lightweight laptops. This is an arena where power and heat are the primary motivators of design and performance is not so important and of course we also can get cheaper devices as well. There was a roadmap that was leaked some time ago and it was a confidential roadmap and it was leaked by Informatico Zero and here we actually saw a listing of Dale which is going to launch in 2020 at least according to this roadmap and now we actually have mention of it on patch notes Enable Dale for DC. Dale is a new ASIC based on Raven. This patch adds the ASIC ID and support for it in the display core, end quote. We don't have specifications here, but based upon the information from Informatico Zero slide, uh, where it lists it under value, uh, value uh, mobile APU, it basically tells us that this device is going to be pretty much the perfect APU for lightweight notebooks. I would probably say that the number of compute units is going to be really minuscule because, well, a high-end GPU is not exactly something that's needed here. This is not going to be playing Doom Eternal at 4K. This is going to be doing lightweight Windows stuff. So probably, let's say, four compute units would be a realistic number. Six on the outside, but honestly, I would be shocked if it has six. I would say four is probably a more realistic number probably at lower clock frequency as well. As for CPU, well, given the release date, assuming that it's still accurate for 2020 and doesn't slip out this year, which is looking unlikely given it's already September, we can probably say it's going to be based on the Zen 2 processor architecture, and it's probably not going to be quad-core. I suspect it's going to have two CPU cores at most. 
leave bets in the uh, comments of this video whether it's going to have SMT enabled or disabled. I'm probably going to say it would have it enabled uh, because I don't think the power consumption is that much higher. Uh, to be honest, in terms of what you would actually lose in terms of performance. So I'd probably say that that would be a good trade-off for them. And yeah, this is definitely a good thing for AMD. And in theory anyway, should help to bring even more competition against Intel in this particular arena. But also, more importantly, just in general. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.